Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. HGM here with a brand new video taking a look at Companions coming soon to the Elder Scrolls Online in the Blackwood chapter. Now after hours and hours of testing on the public test server over the past few weeks, I've come up with a total of seven companion builds that I can now recommend to you fulfilling every role in the game from tank to healer to DPS along with some unique hybrid build options as well. So grab a seat and get ready to unlock some of the best gameplay options that companions have to offer in ESO. These are my top seven companion builds for the Blackwood chapter, and we're starting right now. Let's start off our list with Miri, the Daedric lore loving dark elf coming soon to ESO Blackwood. Now, if you're interested, I do have a complete guide for Miri over on my website, hackthemintheTar.com, which talks a lot more about her background, her skills, passives, unique companion perks, and much more, so make sure to check the links below for that. But for now, just keep in mind that Miri's companion design is very similar to that of the Nightblade class, so that's going to have a big influence on how Miri's builds work in ESO. Now as far as tanking, Miri can actually make a very solid tank with the right setup. This mostly resembles the old school Nightblade sap tank style, which is actually quite powerful. Going along with that, this build combines damage with self-healing and some group healing, as well as some pretty solid defenses, damage reduction, and dodge capabilities. So Miri definitely has the look and feel of a Nightblade tank that has your back at all times. So let's move on to talking about gear for the Miri tank build. You obviously are going to start with sword and shield. I picked these up in the vigorous trait. This increases her max health. And for your body pieces, you're going to want heavy armor. I do like the quicken trait for Miri. This decreases the cooldown of all her abilities. And then for the jewelry, I just picked up uh, three more pieces with the vigorous trait, again, max health. So a combination of max health and then reduced cooldowns makes for a pretty nice tank setup in my testing. And then in terms of Miri's skills, we are obviously going to run the one-handed shield taunt that's called provoke, 15 second taunt uh, with about a 10 second cooldown. So she'll be able to maintain aggro quite nicely. Then we're gonna combine that with life absorption. This is one of those uh, sap tank style abilities. This damages the enemy and then heals Miri back. Her healing also gets buffed by wearing heavy armor, by the way. Then on guard from the one-handed shield skill line, this is a very nice damage shield, absorbs just up to 25% of the companion's health with a very quick cooldown, six and a half seconds. This is a big part of the survivability on this tank setup. And then speaking of survivability, Checking out Ghostly Evasion from the Living Shade skill line. This is that dodge I was talking about. So it's an automatic dodge, plus reducing her damage taken by 20% for 8 seconds. Very powerful ability, uh, considering she won't take one of those big hits from a boss. And then finally, Life Siphon. Again, going on that sap tank feel. Uh, this does AoE damage and then heals Miri as well as you. So a nice bit of extra healing. Now, Mary does have an ultimate. Uh, we'll talk about this more in the DPS setup. She's not going to use it very often when she's tanking, uh, to be honest. If she does happen to use it, great. It actually debuffs the, the boss, making them take more damage for three seconds. But it's not going to make or break your build. Now, number two on our list is going to be the Bastion tank build. And just like Mary, we do have a complete Bastion guide over on the website where you can find more background information likes and dislikes for the rapport system, skill information, and more. But for Bastion, the main thing you need to know is he most closely resembles a Dragon Knight, and many of his abilities come directly from that Dragon Knight toolkit, which means that tanking also comes quite naturally for Bastion. Now the build I'm going to focus on for this video is a boss build, which has a ton of survival, defensive tools, and self-healing. This is what you'll need if you want Bastion to survive against more challenging content, like let's say a veteran dungeon. Keep in mind though that these builds are flexible and you might want to substitute abilities like his Dragon Knight Chains or Dragon Knight Claws to deal with different situations like trash pulls. So we're going to do one-handed shield uh, for Bastion. I was playing around with the bolstered trait. This reduces their damage taken. Uh, I feel like maybe four or five of those would be useful so you could run that on like weapons and jewelry just to reduce their incoming damage by about 8 to 10%. But of course, heavy armor for the tank build, as many heavy pieces as you can get, uh, because that does improve their block mitigation, as well as their healing received, and then quickened as the trait. Quickened is, has been very effective on tank builds in my testing, just to get those abilities uh, as quickly back as possible. Speaking of skills, uh, we are obviously using Provoke. That's again the, the taunt. 
Combined with Drake's Blood, that's his uh, class Dragonite Heal. Second ability here gives a pretty solid burst heal as well as reducing his damage taken for 8 seconds. Combining that with another self heal for more survivability, that's Kindle from the Radiating Heart skill line. This is actually a great skill for any Bastion build because it has such a quick cooldown. I'm going to combine that with On Guard again, that's from One Hand and Shield. Same thing as Miri, running this damage shield. Uh, you wouldn't think a damage shield is that strong, but it's actually essential for the companion tanks in my opinion. Just really helps their survivability. And then speaking of survival, this Fighter's Guild ability is pretty cool as well. Ritual of Salvation puts a rune on the ground. Standing in the rune reduces the companion and your own damage taken uh, for 8 seconds. So pretty cool damage reduction and utility. Of course, Bastion's ultimate is also a bit more damage focused. going to be better for a DPS build. Uh, but it actually does an AoE stun, which can be helpful when dealing with trash mobs. Uh, and it does a fair bit of damage. So if you have the ultimate for this and you have uh, multiple enemies, you might as well use it. Number three on our list is Miri as a DPS build specifically focused on the bow as her main weapon. Now bow actually works well on both Bastion and Miri for DPS setups, mostly because it keeps them at range, which allows them to take very little damage in most fights, keeping their survivability high. But a bow build works specifically well with Miri because her ultimate ability is also a bow skill, though it's not the standard bow ultimate that we all know. This is actually unique to her class abilities. But as far as range, you need to keep this in mind when you consider your companions. Think about ranged versus melee builds, specifically when considering their ultimates, because Bashan's ultimate is actually melee focused, and it's difficult to get companions to use their ultimate if they aren't at the proper range for it. Besides that, keep in mind that ranged builds with companions are also very flexible, and there is no Magicka or Stamina-based stat scaling with companions, so you can mix in magic and physical damage abilities with no problem in order to increase your damage, which is actually what I've done here. So taking a look at the gear for the bow build, obviously you're running a bow. The aggressive trait is what we're going to want for any DPS companion build. This does increase your damage done per piece. In terms of the armor weight, I think medium is actually going to be the best. Uh, medium, we'll look at the passive in a second. It does increase your damage per piece of medium. It's a little bit stronger than the light armor passive. Uh, and then again, jewelry with as many aggressive pieces as you can get. In terms of the skills, let's just look at that medium armor passive real quick. So flexibility increases your damage done by 1% for each piece of medium armor equipped. That's double what you get from wearing light armor. And then she can also roll dodge quicker with that uh, reduced cooldown. But in terms of her damaging abilities, remember what I talked about. You can combine magic and physical damage. So Starfall from the Mage's Guild skill line actually does as much as her other bow abilities. Has a very short cooldown, so it's definitely worth getting. Uh, we're going to combine that with some bow skills, obviously. Piercing Arrow. This is kind of like your snipe ability, 8 second cooldown. Then we're going to combine that with Viper's Bite. This is upfront damage and damage over time. Pretty powerful ability. And then our final range damage. So we're using four sources of range damage on this build. It's going to come from the Fighter's Guild skill line. And you unlock that first there. Sniping Silver. This is the Dawn Guard Vampire Hunter Crossbow. Uh, it does physical damage. It's also ranged. Final ability is up to you. Though I do like this uh, skill from the Mage's Guild. Parallel generates 50 ultimate every 16 seconds. And uh, we'll take a look at Miri's ultimate here in just a second, but it's pretty strong for range GPS. You can see here, it's called Impeccable Shot. Uh, causes the enemy to take 20% more damage for three seconds. So if you have that up more often, you will also do more damage. Plus it does about 35k physical damage just by itself. Pretty strong ultimate as far as uh, generating damage. On to companion number four. Let's talk about Bastion as a healer build. Remember that Bastion is essentially a Dragonite, so he doesn't have access to a lot of group healing in his class toolkit right off the bat, but he does have access to some very strong restoration staff skills that both companions can use, so he'll be using a lot of those to supplement this build. He also has a pretty decent class burst heal with a short cooldown, so we'll be making use of that as well, combined with some guild skills for additional healing. So Restoration Staff, obviously, we're going to use Light Armor for the Healer Bastion with the Quicken Trait. As many Quicken Traits as you can pull off. Uh, I find this to be the absolute best for healing uh, because you can basically stack your heals and, and have them back much quicker on a shorter cooldown. Now, Light Armor, by the way, is going to be ideal for healers. That's because passively, the more pieces of Light Armor you're wearing, 
the more healing done your companion has uh, through the light armor passive. So I'm wearing six pieces of light. I believe I had like one heavy piece. So I've got 6% healing done, which is pretty strong. Now in terms of the active skills, rejuvenation comes from the restoration staff skill line. That's our first ability with an eight second uh, duration and about an eight second cooldown when you're running full quicken. That, that's actually pretty nice. Combine that with Mending Incantation. Now, this did get a slight nerf uh, in the recent PTS patch. I think it now grants seven or 8,000 armor, but it's still a fairly strong ability. Uh, and then we're going to use Mystic Fortress for our emergency damage shield. Uh, this only will happen when you're below 25% health, but it's a very strong damage shield, as you can see. Now, we're going to combine that with uh, Kindle, again, which is a pretty strong burst heal from Bastion that comes from his healing skill line. I like how this has about a five second cooldown. That means he'll be able to throw out tons of these uh, to keep him and you alive. And then finally, uh, one more heal, which you get from the Mage's Guild, which is actually very good. Reverse Entropy is just as strong as Rejuvenation from Restoration Staff. Uh, this one has an eight second cooldown as well with full Quicken gear. Of course, we have the same ultimate. There is no healing ultimate, so this is just some extra damage and an extra stun if you happen to need it. Companion build number five is actually one of my favorites, and that's running Miri as a healer setup. Now, as a Nightblade, many of Miri's skills come with extra healing built into them, which is just awesome for healer builds, obviously. But she also has a very strong heal over time skill in her class toolkit that's just as good as any heal from the Restoration Staff. What this means is that you can stack many heal over time abilities with Miri, which makes for a very powerful and consistent healer support companion. Miri's build will be essentially identical. You want the Restoration Staff, you want the uh, six or seven pieces of light, as many as you can get there, and then Quickened to uh, reduce those cooldowns as much as possible. Now, the skills will change quite a bit because remember I talked about Miri as a Nightblade has more class healing abilities than Bastion. Blood Transfusion is a heal over time from the Soul Thief skill line, very strong. Can combine that with Crimson Font. This is actually from Undaunted. Basically, the companion version of Blood Altar fits really good into the theme of this build, and it's a, it's a decent heal, plus a burst heal on the Synergy, which you can cast at any time. Rejuvenation again, that's another heal over time. We've got Mystic Fortress again for the Emergency Damage Shield, and then again, Reverse Entropy, another fantastic heal over time from the Mage's Guild. Ultimate is there in case you want to cast it. Again, free damage, so you might as well use it. Build number six is something you can do easily on either Bastion or Miri, and that's a melee brawler style build focused on AoE damage and debuffing your enemies. These builds will be very helpful when it comes to grinding experience or clearing through trash in dungeons. Basically, the idea is for the companion to gap close into a group of enemies, root them or stun them, and then start spamming AoE abilities. Miri does this probably the best in my opinion because of her Nightblade class skills. She can gap close in to move more quickly across distances, she has that Nightblade class fear ability, and she also has an AoE damage and heal similar to Sap Essence, which will help keep both of your health bars topped off. Plus, I have to admit, it's just a lot of fun to just watch her mow down enemies with a giant sword or a battle axe. Of course, you'll want some type of two-hander, and I went again with the aggressive trait. Just like our bow DPS, aggressive increases damage done per piece. We're using medium armor again. Medium has the best passives in terms of increasing the companion's damage, and then aggressive still for the jewelry, if you can get that. In terms of the skills, Warp Strike is our gap closer. You'll want that in slot number one. That's just so she can gap close into combat if she's not already. Then we're using Mask of Torment. That's the Nightblade class Fear. Stuns enemies in place for four seconds with an eight second cooldown. It's pretty strong. Then we're using Sunder for that conal front damage, does upfront damage as well as the damage over time. More AoE damage comes from Life Siphon. This also heals uh, Miri and ourselves, which is really nice. Final spot is really flexible. It's whatever you want. Uh, I did like running the Fighter's Guild ability here. Again, Ritual of Salvation. This gives you a nice AoE on the, on the ground, protects you and Miri, reduces your damage taken. So that's what I would recommend for like a, a brawler or slash melee play style. And last but not least, that brings us to build number seven, back to Bastion and our unique buff slash damage hybrid setup. With this, I wanted to showcase that you aren't just restricted to a pure tank, healer, or DPS build, 
but you can actually mix and match skills on your companion in a way that will improve your own character in some way, filling in some gaps in your own build. This is actually a really fun way to build up a companion to support you, getting through some harder content, and I definitely recommend you experiment and try out the skills yourself once you have access in the Blackwood chapter. Now this particular build I'm calling the Amplifier because Bastion has a few abilities that enhance certain skills on my build, like casting an extra damage shield or increasing my own heavy and light attack damage. And since I was already playing a Magicka character focused on damage shields and heavy attacks, this was actually a really nice addition to my build. So for this build, any ranged weapon is fine. I like Restoration Staff. I was using it for other builds, so why not? Quicken Trait for all of these reduces the cooldown of your abilities by quite a bit. That's what I recommend. You can honestly do light or medium armor with this setup. It, it doesn't make much of a difference. Light armor, though, does give you a nice balance, I'd say, of healing and damage. So for hybrid setups, light armor might be the way to go. For our buff abilities, Ardent Warrior gives you and Bastion a free damage shield, 6 second duration, and an 8 second cooldown. You also increase your healing received while that damage shield is active, which is nice. And then Searing Weapons is that buff I talked about buffing our heavy and light attacks. This is going to be pretty powerful, I think, especially on heavy attack builds, you might consider that. Skeletal Aegis gives Bastion a damage shield, and then you can get your own damage shield from a synergy, which is really nice. You can cast it anytime you need it. It's definitely handy. And then we put on a Starfall from the Mage's Guild. Very short cooldown on that one. And speaking of cooldowns, uh, if you are running Light Armor, you can also run the Haste ability. This basically refreshes all your cooldowns, resets them from scratch, though you can only do that about once every 25 seconds. So there you have it, everybody. Seven quick companion builds to get you started in the Blackwood chapter for the Elder Scrolls Online. Now, these are not the only good builds by far. There's many other build possibilities out there. This is just what I have been experimenting with over the past couple weeks and what I've found to uh, work really well with my play style. Now, as I mentioned before, if you need to see more about companions, if you want to see written versions of these builds, uh, check out the links in the description and the pinned comment below. Adding more written guides, more build information every single day. So make sure to keep checking on that. As always, if you enjoyed the video today or you found it at all informative, make sure to crush that like button for me. And let me know what kind of companion build you want to try in the comment section down below. I'd definitely be curious to read all of those. And once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.